What if I told you that after nearly 1,200 days sitting motionless in the California desert, a 500-ton aircraft just came back to life? Not just any aircraft. The Airbus A380, the world's largest passenger plane, abandoned by almost every airline on Earth. While competitors rushed to permanently retire their super jumbos, Qantas made a $200 million bet that most industry analysts considered reckless. Now, with their final stored A380 back in the skies, that gamble is paying off in ways no one predicted. If you love aviation and want to learn more about the industry's most fascinating stories, hit that subscribe button right now. Because what happened at Mojave Air and Spaceport reveals something extraordinary about the future of long-haul travel. The year is March 2020. Airlines worldwide face an impossible decision as global travel collapses overnight. United Airlines announces the immediate retirement of their entire 747 fleet. Lufthansa parks their A380 OHS with no return date. Air France accelerates retirement plans by four years. Then there's Qantas. Australia's flag carrier takes 10 of their 12 a 3808s and sends them not to the scrapyard, but to storage. The aviation world watches with skepticism. Why preserve aircraft that burn 25% more fuel per seat than modern alternatives? Why spend millions maintaining machines that most experts believed would never fly commercially again? Alan Joyce, Qantas CEO at the time, faced intense pressure from investors and analysts. The logical move was clear. Cut losses, retire the fleet, and move on. But Joyce saw something others didn't. He understood that Australia's unique geography created unusual economics for the A380. Think about that for a moment. Australia sits isolated from the world's major aviation markets. Flying from Sydney to Los Angeles covers 7,500 miles. Sydney to London spans over 10,500 miles. These aren't just long routes. They're ultra-long haul marathons that favor aircraft with massive passenger capacity. Here's what the critics missed. At major international hubs like LAX, Heathrow, and Dallas-Fort Worth, landing slots are precious commodities. Airlines can't simply add more flights. Airports physically cannot handle increased traffic. The only way to grow on these slot-constrained routes is to use larger aircraft. For Qantas, operating a single A380 flight to Los Angeles wasn't just about efficiency. It was about accessing a market where adding frequency was impossible. But believing the A380 had a future and actually bringing one back from desert storage are entirely different challenges. Let me explain what it takes to resurrect a super jumbo that's been sitting dormant for over three years. The Mojave Air and Spaceport in California serves as aviation's purgatory, a place where aircraft wait in limbo between active service and permanent retirement. The location isn't random. Mojave's high desert climate offers something critical, extremely low humidity. Moisture is an aircraft's enemy, promoting corrosion in electrical systems, hydraulics, and structural components. In Mojave's arid environment, aircraft can sit for years with minimal degradation. When Qantas sent their a 38 OS to Mojave, they didn't just park them and walk away. Each aircraft underwent a meticulous preservation process. Engineers sealed all openings, covering engines, auxiliary power units, and sensors with protective materials. They drained fluids from certain systems while carefully maintaining others. Climate control systems ran periodically to prevent internal condensation. Landing gear received special attention as tires and hydraulics deteriorate rapidly without regular use. Every month, Qantas engineers flew from Australia to California to perform maintenance checks. They rotated tires to prevent flat spots. They ran engines through partial cycles. They inspected thousands of components for any signs of degradation. This wasn't cheap. Industry estimates suggest the storage and preservation program cost Qantas approximately $150,000 to $200,000 per aircraft per month. Across 10 aircraft over multiple years, the total expenditure exceeded $50 million. That's before spending a single dollar on reactivation. Have you ever wondered what it takes to wake up a sleeping giant? The reactivation process for the final A380 began months before its first flight. Qantas assembled a specialized team of engineers, technicians, and aviation specialists. Their challenge was unprecedented return an aircraft to airworthiness after the longest storage period in modern commercial aviation history. First came the comprehensive inspections. Engineers examined every critical system, every structural component, every electrical connection. 
The A380 contains approximately 320 miles of wiring and over 100,000 individual parts. Each required verification. Hydraulic systems were tested and refilled. Fuel systems were purged and cleaned. Engines underwent complete inspections with technicians examining turbine blades for any signs of corrosion or damage. Then came the test flights. Before any paying passenger could board, the aircraft performed multiple proving flights. Pilots pushed systems through extreme scenarios, testing performance at various weights, altitudes, and configurations. These weren't short hops around the pattern. They were extensive missions designed to verify every system performed exactly as required. The final stored aircraft, registration VHOQK, completed its reactivation and returned to service in July 2024. The total cost for bringing this single aircraft back. Qantas hasn't disclosed exact figures, but industry analysts estimate between $15 million and $25 million per aircraft for the complete reactivation program. Now here's where the story gets interesting. While Qantas invested heavily to preserve and reactivate their A380 fleet, their competitors made opposite choices with consequences they're now confronting. Lufthansa discovered too late that they'd retired their A380s prematurely. Passenger demand for their largest, most comfortable aircraft exceeded expectation. The German carrier explored reactivating stored aircraft but faced a harsh reality. Once you begin the retirement process, reversing course becomes exponentially expensive. Air France permanently retired their entire A380 fleet during the pandemic, stripping some for parts and sending others to scrapyards. By 2023, they watched helplessly as demand on key routes exceeded their capacity. British Airways kept a portion of their fleet but retired others permanently, limiting their flexibility for future growth. Qantas, meanwhile, positioned themselves perfectly. With all 12 A380s now operational, they control the largest active A380 fleet in the world outside of Emirates. This isn't just about having big planes. It's about strategic dominance on the most profitable long-haul routes. Consider the Los Angeles route. Qantas can deploy a configured A380 carrying up to 485 passengers in four classes. The alternative would be operating two Boeing 787 Dreamliners, each carrying roughly 240 passengers. Operationally, that means double the crew costs, double the landing fees, double the airport charges, and crucially, two valuable landing slots instead of one. When slots cost millions at major airports, the economics dramatically favor the A380. But there's another factor that makes this strategy even more compelling. The premium passenger experience. Qantas's A380s feature first-class suites, business-class seats that convert to fully flat beds, premium economy with generous legroom, and even economy seats that are noticeably more spacious than narrow-body alternative. In a post-pandemic world where travelers increasingly value comfort and space, the A380 commands pricing power that smaller aircraft cannot match. This raises an intriguing question. Is Qantas's success with the A380 unique to their circumstances, or does it signal a broader renaissance for the Super Jumbo? The answer lies somewhere in the middle. For most airlines, the A380 remains economically challenging. It requires consistently high passenger loads to be profitable. It needs airports with the infrastructure to handle its massive size. It works best on routes where frequency is constrained and capacity is king. But for airlines operating in specific markets, the A380's value proposition is actually strengthening. Emirates continues to operate over 100 A380's profitably. Korean Air maintains their fleet. Singapore Airlines has reactivated stored aircraft. British Airways is maximizing utilization of their remaining super jumbos. What's changed isn't the aircraft, it's the market conditions. Slot constraints at major airports have intensified, not eased. Premium travel has recovered faster than economy, playing to the A380's strengths. And fuel efficiency, while important, matters less when your alternative is operating multiple smaller aircraft to carry the same number of passengers. The environmental angle presents an interesting paradox. The A380 consumes more fuel in absolute terms than any other commercial aircraft. But on a per seat basis, when fully loaded, it's actually competitive with modern twin engine wide bodies. A full A380 uses roughly three liters of fuel per 100 kilometers per passenger. A Boeing 787, despite its modern efficiency, uses approximately 2.5 liters. The difference isn't as dramatic as critics suggest, especially when you account for the total emissions of operating multiple smaller flights 
to move the same number of people. For Qantas, the return of their final stored A380 represents more than just fleet restoration. It's validation of a contrarian bet made during the industry's darkest moment. While competitors dismantled their super jumbos, Qantas invested millions to preserve theirs. While analysts questioned the wisdom of maintaining the world's largest passenger aircraft, Qantas recognized that Australia's geographic isolation created unique economics. The broader implications extend beyond one airline's fleet strategy. The A380 story demonstrates that in aviation, as in life, conventional wisdom isn't always correct. The industry consensus declared the super jumbo dead. Market forces suggest otherwise. Routes exist where nothing else delivers the combination of capacity, passenger experience, and slot efficiency that the A380 provides. As VHOQK, Qantas's final stored A380 climbs into Australian skies carrying hundreds of passengers to destinations around the world, it carries something else too. Proof that sometimes the biggest risk is following the crowd. What do you think? Was Qantas' decision to preserve their A380 fleet brilliant strategy or just fortunate timing? Have you flown on Qantas A380 and how did the experience compare to smaller aircraft? Drop your thoughts in the comments below.